All right, welcome to Black Book Basics. I'm Opus, this is Coach T. And then today we're gonna to be talking to you guys, we're gonna answer the question, should I block my ex on social media? See, I'm only on social media when I'm in the bathroom, basically. That's like when I'm on the phone. <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody brings their phone to the yeah. bathroom with them. Everybody does. Like, I'll be like, I'll run halfway to the bathroom and be like, oh man, I forgot my phone. Then I gotta run back, get it, yeah. go in the bathroom. You know, you could just be like, petty, you know? Huh, she broke up with me, I'm blocking her. She's blocked now. Huh? It's, just, it's like small petty stuff, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's cool for you guys to break up and still like follow each other on social media. I mean, as long as you ain't trying to like be the friend zone, unless that's what you want. But it's cool to be like, you know, cool on social media. Are you really emotionally stable to even be friends on social media? Like, are you okay with seeing pictures of her having a good time on her social media and her posting pictures of her like out on the beach and hanging out with other guys? Like, if you're if you're emotionally stable for that and you can handle seeing that, cool, you know what I'm saying? But if not, then try be in your best interest to go ahead and just block her. Because most of the guys, what, they get in their emotions, they're not centered emotionally, so now you're de dealing with a platform that is designed to manipulate your emotions and to play on your emotions and to trigger your emotion. And it was a documentary called The Social Dilemma on, uh, on Netflix. I'm not sure if it's still on there, but it was talking about how it's designed to keep you on the app. So it plays on, it plays on, on, on you know, envy, plays on jealousy, plays upon, you know, that, that narcissist inside of us. And, you know, you're, you're dealing with something that, it's like a Russian roulette. You know, you can get on there just so you want to see pictures of your newborn niece, and you see your ex, you see her getting flewed out to Dubai, and you're like, that's different. But we're in Saginaw, Michigan, and what she's doing in Dubai, some sultan, some sultan is flewing her out and doing a lot of salacious things to her for a Birkin bag, <laughs> you know, getting her rent paid for the next six months. And that's going to trigger you. You're going to see them sultans do. They call it a hummus mafia. They do all types of things over there. So I've heard. But you're going to get triggered because you're not in a great place emotionally after the breakup. So now you're going to be on a platform that's going to have you more obsessive, going to make you more insecure, it's going to make you more jealous, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to delay the healing process even more so now. And it's going to make you act out in a certain way because you're going to see certain, and we were talking about this off, off camera, but it's one thing to know that your ex is dealing with a new guy or it's one thing to, to, to know that the girl that ghosted on you is dealing with a new guy, but it's another thing to totally see him and hear his voice, or you're looking at her stories, and he's in there, and now he's he's six inches taller than you. He drives a six series, he's got six pack abs, but it's gonna play on your insecurity because now you feel like you're not enough to be in a relationship with her because she left you, and now you feel like you're really not enough because she upgraded, quote unquote upgraded from you. That's really gonna take a dagger inside of your heart and just drive it, just drive that dagger, drive the dagger <laughs> in there, put a stake through your heart like you're a vampire. Just, Sorry. You just spit all over the damn. I do that a lot, man. We gotta get one of those little uh, yellow signs, caution, <laughs> slippery right. wet signs. You need a squeegee get to the mop. Get the mop over here. <laughs> Clean up get on the aisle four. Cause like when I was dating uh, my ex Jillian back in the Jillian. day, right? Jillian. Jillian. You can actually say her name and not break down now, man. Nah, I can't. It took a while. Yeah. It took like ten years of therapy. Those group therapy sessions have really been paying off. Hell man. yeah! Last week was the last one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> give it up for Opus, y'all. Leave a comment <laughs> below. And give Opus some congratulations. Man, he made it made through. It made it through, made it through the store. <laughs> Leave nah. a congrats in the in the in the in the comment section, man. He made it. So we broke up, all right. You know, best looking girls I've fooled around with, you know, arguably. So I'm thinking like, man, like I was, you know, this is this is like 10 years ago. I was in my little, uh, you know, my fuckboy stage and whatnot. Did all my crying, mm -hmm. all that stuff, you know, pleading, begging, and everything. I'm thinking like she's with some like super smooth, like muscular, bad boy, you know what I'm saying? So we were friends on social media, you know, we were still following each other, you know. She finally posted a picture with a new man. And I give my man props, I respect him. But at the time she was like 30, but the guy that she's with now was like like 51 or something like that. He was like a, like a big, like gumpy He's dude. Overweight. Yeah, he, oh, he looked man. just like, uh, I don't know if you remember the old school show, Roseanne Barr, but he, oh. I swear he looked just like her husband, bro. Wow, John Goodman? John Goodman, yes. <laughs> just, looked just like John Goodman. Man. And man, I seen that. He, I'm he like, said he was shaped like Peter Griffin on oh Family God, Guy. bro. <laughs> yeah, just like that. And I seen that, I'm like, <laughs> like I, was, no, I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Until a week later, he bought her a $115,000 Range Rover. That's when I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, man. But you see what he just said though. A week later, that means 
He's looking at it from day to day, oh, yeah, I was, checking it, you know, checking up on it, and that's what happened. Stalking it, I was like stalking uh, it, like every, and it, it was, it was almost like every hour, every two hours, I'd be back on social media. Did she post something yet? Refresh, refresh. Oh, she didn't post anything. Fine. Oh yeah, she posted yeah. a picture of her puppy. Okay, all right, cool. Oh, refresh, yeah. refresh. It can work for or you know against you. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it made me feel good seeing that like she completely downgraded to this like ugly dude that cannot compare to me if we we're around a group of women. He cannot compete, period. And That's then right. I seen like this dude is like balling out of control and he has like mad money, which is obviously the reason why she got with this guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it can work for or against you. It's just are you emotionally stable to actually like handle seeing her like living a, a better life than you, you know, or or, or uh seeing her with like a a lot of money or or you know, just being happy. If you if you can handle that and you're and you're sincerely cool seeing like, yeah, I'm happy for her. She's doing good. She has a new man. She's happy with her man, you know, then cool, you know, go ahead and like continue to be friends with her. But if you're like still like constantly thinking about her and constantly like refreshing your phone, it can get like real serious, it can really like break your heart and like really mess with your head. And it really wouldn't be a bad idea at all to block her. You hit on something interesting what you just said. You like Refresh, refresh, refresh. Oh, refresh, refresh. Oh, look at that. What that is, that's, you know, that's that dopamine hit. That hormone of dopamine, you know, flooding through your body. And our body craves, you know, good emotions. You know, we want to be in that place of seeking the next good emotion. So you get addicted to that. And you're, you know, we said in previous videos that, you know, certain receptors in the brain, as far as, you know, heroin addicts or cocaine addicts are the similar to the same receptors in your brain that activate when you're, you know, feeling, you know, feelings of love and emotion and, and, and affection, I should say. So during, you know, grief and a breakup, you know, we, we have the similar patterns of a heroin addict or a cocaine addict, you know, this erratic behavior, desperation, manic, you know, your emotions are all over the place. You know, it's kind of like me on a Thursday night, you know, it's just, I'm all over the place. That's what I felt like too, the whole time. Yeah. I'm like over here, just like scratching my yeah. neck and twitching, man. I'm like, I need yeah. some money. I'm over here thinking I'm about to suck dick for some damn money and shit. Like, man, <laughs> how, how can I afford to have me a $115,000 Range Rover and shit? You know what I'm saying? Love and heroin are like the same yeah, thing, y'all. I'm telling you. telling you. Look, he's still feeling the twitches. Look at that. Up here tweaking. It never leaves you. You two about to turn this damn channel off. <laughs> they about to get off the band. Right. It's over. <laughs> it's over. You know, it's also going to make you attached to your phone because he just said, like, you're looking for that next hit. Like, what's Jillian up, what, up to? Refresh. What, what's Tatiana Refresh. up to? Refresh. You know, what, what's, what's, uh, what's Wendy up to? Man, like, I got to, you know, I got to check it. You know, any type of notification or, or text message or text notification that you get, the sound, and, you know, like, bing. You're thinking it's, oh, I gotta, it's Jillian's done something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's Andrea's done something. I gotta check, I gotta see what's going on. And it'd be like, <laughs> your iPhone storage is at almost at capacity. You need to, you know, refill, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> tweaked out for that bullshit, <laughs> right? It plays on that obsessiveness, man. And it, it, it's really a dangerous thing. It's really a slippery slope. So in essence, we say, we don't advise you to block, you know, your ex. Only under the condition if you feel like you can't handle all of the bullshit that's going to come from seeing things on social media. If you know that you're, and I don't want to say weak-willed as, you know, to, to kind of, you know, look down on you, but yeah, you we're weak-willed after a break, though. We're going through a lot of emotional stuff. And if you don't have that emotional discipline to say, look, all right, man, I'm just going to not going to look at a page. I'm going to stay off of it. I'm just going to post stuff that I want to post and I'm cool. I can do this. If you can't do that, you might have to go ahead and block her just because it's going to be the best move for you to do. To exactly. Because it's almost like your emotions. It's, it's almost like a, like a game in a way. And I know it sounds like mm -hmm. really bad. And it's kind of immature. But like you, you, you're going to be playing a game. She's going to be posting things on her page because she knows you guys are friends and mm -hmm. she knows you're looking. So she's going to post these these pictures of her like out on the beach or like the new car she got and like the, you know, a guy that she's with and the new purse <laughs> she had. Like she's going to she's going to be posting stuff like that because yeah. she knows that you're watching. And she wants to like get a reaction out of you. She wants to like she wants to like, you know, hurt you basically because she's still probably hurt from the breakup, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. So it kind of works both ways. I mean, like, I'm not really for like playing games, like, but right. you know, it's it, it's it's cool. Like, if, if you if you're living your best life, I hate the damn quote, but I gotta uh, say, it. if I you're losing, <laughs> if, you're, if you're living your best life, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Post these pictures on your Instagram and all that stuff. 
you may have like for all you know out of your like thousand followers you may have like other women that are actually seeing wow he's you know he just graduated or dang he, he stepped up and got a new job now you know what i'm saying like my man i forget his name but we did a coaching session with him you know he got a job at fedex taking pictures in front of his truck like yeah man mm-hmm. do that like be, be proud of like the success you have right. post it on online and let all your uh all your other followers like see you and then they'll like start you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll be more interested in you seeing that you're successful, you're making moves, and they'll right. want to, you know, people want to be around, like, positive people. People want to be around people that are actually, like, successful and making moves and actually doing something with themselves besides the people that actually, like, sit there and just take pictures of, like, their food or, like, the video games. And, All right, dog. I, I beat it level seven, whatever, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah, and the dogs and stuff like that. They want to be around people that are actually, like, on the beach having fun, you know what I'm saying? Cool, I'm actually, you know, eating at a five star hundred dollar plate restaurant or right. you know whatever they want to be around people like that so if you're if you're living that life then yeah post stuff like that go ahead and do it as a side effect your ex will see it she'll get jealous mm-hmm. and that's an emotional spike but now if you cheated on your ex <laughs> if you if you were a sleaze ball dirt bag a dastardly human being and you cheated on her and you block her on social media or you posting up pics of the new chick that's that's hotter than your ex, that's badder than her, that's a guaranteed wow. ticket to send your ex to the ER with slits all over her wrist. She's trying to hit that vein and... That is, hey, guys, that's stupid. That's like, a horrible thing to do. Like, we, that's, you know. It has some decorum, has some tact, has some... Because you know she's looking. We all look, man. It's it's natural human being. It's a natural... It's a natural inclination. We're going to look, man. I was looking at a chick last night I used to kick it with, and I saw some stuff on there. I was like, oh, okay, interesting. So you're going to look. It's okay, but you, I'm able to handle it. He can look at Jillian and see some stuff and not even get, well, just now. I'm, I'm sorry, man. You know, there's certain bouts that, you know, certain time periods that he might not. just depends on which way the wind is blowing at time. Let's just talk about something. Okay. Let's move forward. Okay. So if you're not over your ex and uh, you're struggling with your social media addiction because these social media apps are designed to keep you on the app and keep you hooked, okay, reach out to us for a coaching session at blackbookbasics.com forward slash private coaching and Opus may or may not be on the call depending on if he's emotionally healthy enough to deal with some trauma at the time. You hear the soft weeping noises of a man who's been broken. I'm cool, man. You're not cool. Man. Cool. You just turn, just quit recording, dog. Just turn this shit off, sorry, man. man. Turn this off. I'm sorry.